you got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. What's up, campers, friends, people casually surfing around YouTube looking for information on turtles, tortoises, and other reptiles? Uh, it's Kenan here, and it's Saturday, or at least that's when this video was uploaded. And today's video is, of course, an Ask Camp Kenan. Uh, Ask Camp Kenan is a lot of fun. I love to interact with everybody out there. Thanks for the support on Patreon. Really appreciate that. And today's question comes from Heather Burke. Heather has been a uh, supporter for a while, and she has two tortoises she got in December. Uh, one, though, is growing quicker than another. So she's concerned about whether or not it's getting enough nutrition and whether or not she needs to do something about it. So today's uh, question is going to deal with that as I wander aimlessly through my little camp here. Uh, yeah, that can actually turn into a problem sometimes, but don't freak out because we have to remember how reptiles uh, go about the business of reproduction and how many eggs they lay. We have to remember that in the wild, uh, certain species of reptiles as a survival strategy will lay a large amount of eggs. Sea turtles, some kind of tortoises do that. Um, crocodilians, they all lay a lot of eggs. Um, now, first off, most eggs are destroyed pretty much immediately in the wild. Uh, within the first 24 hours, many turtle eggs, uh, turtle nests are raided and unfortunately they are eaten. Now, that's a bummer uh, because what happens is uh, those uh, turtles don't hatch. <laughs> yeah, that's a bummer, man. Uh, but what does happen, as we look at some leopard tortoises here, uh, is it gives other animals a chance to survive. So they're basically going into the food chain, which is very, very important part of nature. Uh, when turtles, tortoises, crocodilians, other reptiles reach adulthood, uh, for the most part, they get to live long lives. And we know that 1% of their offspring are the only ones that make it to adulthood. So that is why they have so many uh, eggs. Now, in addition to having so many eggs, let's say they do hatch. The nests don't get raided, but the animals hatch and they scurry, as we've all seen, uh, they scurry out of the nest down to the beach to try and get to the water. Most are picked off. Again, it's a game of numbers with reptiles. Uh, the animals that get picked off are indeed helping out other reptiles or excuse me, other animals uh, survive. Uh, here are some radiated tortoises and these guys here are uh you know they don't lay large clutches and then of their clutches uh unfortunately not a lot of them are uh, fertile eggs so they have a low success rate which is why they're endangered uh which is why it's important we try and help these animals and captive breeding is one of the ways we do that um but anyway back to the discussion at hand uh, let's see. Well, anyhow, uh, these animals, you know, as we know, reptiles will have a lot of eggs and that's what they're doing. They're going back into the food chain. The ones that do survive get pretty much the uh, gift of as close to being immortal on earth as you can be, as long as they've not been uh, eaten and they can grow to adulthood. Here's a nice little radiated tortoise just uh, kind of sunbathing and now going in because it's starting to get real hot. So what happens then uh, is some of these babies will just have the gene for survival. Uh, they grow, they get big, they just, they just start to consume uh, resources, nutrients, and they grow fast. Uh, others, um, the, you know, nature kind of weeds out survival of the fittest, right? Now in captivity, we're giving everyone a better shot. So sometimes the genes that are expressed, uh, you know, you'll see it in sometimes animals in the same clutch, like for example, like you're dealing with, with a tortoise that's just growing rapidly. Uh, this is just my theory, okay? And my theory, I haven't done any serious scientific work on this, but uh, my little belief is that those are the animals that were programmed genetically just to eat. They're the toughest, they're strong, they're basically going about doing their thing, uh, growing quicker, because as we know, if they grow quick enough, uh, they develop those hard shells and they have a more likely chance of survival out there in the wild. Now, uh, it could also be that the one that you have that is not growing fast enough is kind of getting bullied a little bit by the guy that is. So what I would suggest is if you have a tortoise that is growing slower, remove him from the enclosure with the other one. Or if you cannot do that, start to feed those animals separately. 
um, that will uh, give the other one who may just be a little shy, may not be kind of in the zone as far as growing quick and being tough and alpha. It may just give him, uh, get him over that hump, if that makes any sense to you folks. Uh, we just came inside because I figured while we're talking about tortoises, we might as well look at some babies that just hatched. We got some baby sulcatas right out here, and these are all from the same clutch. Uh, I got the UVB light on them right now, and then I'm going to put them outside eventually. They've mucked up their water and eaten a bunch of weeds, but let's have a look. So in the wild, most of these guys would not survive. They would actually just get eaten up, and if they were lucky, they get to grow into adulthood. So um, the reason here, they're all out, and you see their little umbilicus there, their little yolk sac. But some of these guys are just going to grow faster. Some of them are not. Um, of course, I get these guys all started. They're pretty bulletproof tortoises, uh, the little sulcatas. And as we know, they can grow big and they can, uh, in fact, reach sizes of close to 200 pounds if they are a large male. Uh, some of these are going to grow quicker than the others, as I've mentioned. And in which case, you know, I'll keep an eye on the ones that don't start to grow and move around and kind of act the way they should. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll separate them out. I'll put the more aggressive ones with the, the, uh, the better eaters go with better eaters. Uh, I give them more space. We have another uh, empty Zoomed container here or tortoise habitat right here. Uh, that will get utilized as well. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, they're starting to hatch. Let's look in the incubator because I do think we have some hatching that I can show you right now in the good old incubator. Uh, but it's just a part of the life cycle of most reptiles, okay? They are going to hatch. They're gonna all work together to get out of that nest and then they are on their own. Look at that, everybody, how about it? It is sulcata season. So even some that hatch look a little bit larger than some of the other ones. And that's just because they have that gene. They have that uh, kind of, look at this guy wiggling around. They are just ready to fight for their survival, uh, to grow as quickly as possible by eating a natural diet and hide. So that's what's gonna happen. So Heather Burke, I hope I'm answering your question. And to answer it and sum everything up in this video, I'm gonna put these guys back because they need a little bit more time in the incubator. Hold on everyone. Oh, there we go. Always difficult to do this one-handed. Uh, but anyway, so to answer your question to Heather and anyone else out there who's got a question similar about tortoises that grow faster than others, I would separate them or feed them separately so you can make sure they're in fact eating. Also make sure you're giving them their calcium supplements, their multivitamin, and a varied diet. Uh, very important. If you see any kind of aggression with these animals, uh, separate them because we know that captivity can sometimes produce stresses of its own if you're overcrowding a animal or the situation it lives in. So that would be my advice. We did a pretty good loop around the camp, saw some leopard tortoises, some radiated tortoises, and uh, hopefully we answered your question, Heather. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter, and thanks to everyone out there who watches the videos and enjoys them. Uh, hit like if you like it. Subscribe if you want to know more. Don't forget to hit the notifications bell as well so you know when I'm uploading. And uh, there you have it. Head on over to patreon.com slash campkennon if you'd like to become a patron and help us make more videos. All right, everyone, Kennen is done. I got to upload this so Tom can get to work and get it out to you ASAP. See you later.